How are we doing, Kansas City? My name is Philip Ryan, and I am from the Diocese of Covington, Kentucky. I'm currently a junior at Covington Catholic High School. <laughs> and I'd like to start, um, I'd just like to say that I've learned through my experiences that miracles, they're just among us and they're alive and well wherever we are, wherever we go. And I hope by giving this talk that I just inspire you to realize that and to know that, that it's really a true, it's a true statement. It was this very week, 10 years ago, that the neurosurgeon's report stated inoperable, infiltrative, malignant brain tumor. Those piercing words for my family provided a foundation of faith that will never change. Jeremiah 29 11 says that I have plans for you. The Lord promises that he has plans for us, plans to not harm us and to prosper us. Believe that. The neurosurgeons told me, Philip, you will never go back to first grade. You will never play sports ever again. There is no hope. There is no hope. Jeremiah 29 11 says there is hope. There is hope. My dad was talking to me one, one day coming home in the car and he, he asked, Philip, does God ever talk to you? And I said, yes, dad. He talks to me, and he tells me he loves me and is going to take care of me. Then my dad responded, well, does he ever ask you questions? And I said, no, Dad. God told me he sees and knows everything. He doesn't need to ask questions. He's the omnipotent, everlasting God. He does not need to ask questions. During a chemo treatment, it's not really a common hobby of a seven-year-old boy to go to chemo every week. But that's what I did, because I'm cool. <laughs> On these car rides, I would ask my mom, Mom, why are you taking me here? I'd be like, Mom, really? I'm healed, Mom. There is no need to take me to these chemo treatments. I'm healed. My mom would ask, well, Philip, how do you know? How do you know you're healed? I responded, Mom, I just know. Now these three words were my simple explanation I feel deep in my heart for the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. The Holy Spirit. I did not know it at the time of age seven, but I now realize it was the Spirit speaking to me, my guardian angel being with me, and I am forever grateful for that, Lord. Thank you so much. During one chemo treatment, I was being prayed over and I was asked what I felt or saw. I explained I felt a great, great warmth deep in my soul. And I saw Michael the Archangel piercing my tumor with his sword. And he was surrounded by three other archangels named Gabriel, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel. Now, I don't know how many of you have heard of the angel Uriel, but my dad did some research and he found that Uriel is mentioned in the ancient book of Enoch, written before Christ was born. Now, being a seven-year-old boy, I really didn't, I can tell you, I didn't do any research in Enoch. You can take it, please. I, so, Holy Spirit, right? Can I get some warmth in the house? Holy Spirit, right? Amen. <laughs> so one day I have these frequent checkups for chemo and the doctor said, he came in the room, he said, Philip, your motor skills and reflexes have been non-existent. So he proceeds to stand in front of me to check my motor re and reflexes in my knee. And he tests the reflex, he hits the hammer. And as the hammer hits my knee, the doctor laid on the ground. The words that came from my mouth were, O oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> After two shunts or tubes that drained fluid from my head to my chest were inserted, there was more fluid buildup. So I had a CAT scan to make sure that there was no need for a third shunt. 
And <laughs> I made up this rap because I was a seven-year-old pretty cool kid. The rap went as follows. In Jesus' name, let it drain. Meaning the fluid. So let me hear this. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, the doctors explained to me that they usually see as much or if not more fluid buildup after the scan. So after the scan, a little, like a week later, my parents got the phone call. The doctor said, there is no logical explanation, Mr. and Mrs. Ryan. The fluid is totally gone. Some of the graces I've been blessed to have in my life with the blessing of St. Padre Pio's glove, the visiting of, I've, I've been blessed by three of the six Medjugorje visionaries, including Visca. And I've taken a, a pilgrimage to Lourdes, France to bathe in the healing waters where Bernadette saw Our Lady. To date, I have not been back to the hospital in five years. The last report I've been given by the doctors is stable upon diagnosis, which is a miracle in itself because it was supposed to be malignant brain tumor. But it's, according to them, it hasn't changed. But according to God, it's no longer there. It's no longer there. I am totally healed. It is all God's grace and the Holy Spirit and the intercession of Our Lady. Can I get a warm welcome for these awesome, oh my goodness. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, if you do not have a storm like this in your life, all I can tell you is have hope, have faith. Those are the things that you need in your life to prosper. Have hope, have faith. Cutlass is a Christian band, one of my favorite Christian bands. And they have a song with a refrain that goes, I've seen faith that moves the mountains, hope that doesn't ever end. Even when the sky is falling, I've seen miracles just happen. Broken hearts become brand new. That, my brothers and sisters, is what faith can do. Amen. God is showering or raining his blessings in my life, and you have to allow him to reign in yours. Take that one small leap of faith, the faith the size of a mustard seed, my brothers and sisters, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. If you have this, it will blossom into more than you can ever imagine. An abundance of miracles will come your way if you only let go and let God take the reins of